Is it, it woo, 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 woo? Dang it. Thank you. Woo! I am so sorry. I don't know why. I, what? I got a kitten brain. That's all there is to it. So I don't know what you guys will hear, what you guys won't, because I still don't understand what kind of delay hitting go live means. I've gotten so used to OBS when I click start streaming and just does it that I forget sometimes. So uh, I'm just going to be real boring and repeat myself and hopefully it didn't catch all that. So what happened today is my family, my brother found a kitten. He's a delivery driver and he found a kitten outside of Papa John's and uh, my family's decided I think to keep it. So when you say kitten to me, I'm off like a shot. I was like, yes, kitten. So um, I went to go meet them at the park and meet the kitten, of course. And uh, I went with them to PetSmart because they've never, they've never taken care of a kitten that young. So, uh, ah, thanks Joseph. So um, I went with them to help them out because I've taken care of a couple of kittens that young. So we picked up some kitten food. We picked up a warming toy that you microwave and it helps the kitten stay warm all night. Uh, we picked up a small litter pan and I also donated some, some goodies for them to borrow because a couple years ago we had to say goodbye to Remy, their orange Manx who we'd had since I was in high school. So um, it was just really nice that Devin found this kitten, was able to rescue this kitten and um, that they're th really strongly considering keeping said kitten. I think it'll be good for everybody in the house to have a pet again. So that's why we uh, did the kitten stream. So if you want some some warm fuzzies, that I think that's still up, but that's what we were doing. Always kitten brain too. Yeah, that, that, I'm gonna use that as my excuse now. We got a kitten. Um, we, Joseph and I don't have a kitten. We got Bowie. Uh, he is not, he met the kitten. He is like, I don't know about that. Um, but my extended family is gonna keep the kitten so I'm glad it was a really nice afternoon and a good like you know rejuvenator I guess so tomorrow morning we're taking kitten to the vet and y'all cross your fingers that there isn't I mean it's a feral kitten very friendly but still a feral kitten you know so there's we know there's fleas uh, the kitten is probably a little bit anemic because it had fleas and was feral and it's probably underweight so um, I know there's going to be problems with that. I'm hoping it isn't like something awful. I mean, that kitten is so young. <laughs> but um, anyway, if you guys want some warm fuzzies, you can check out the stream from slightly earlier. So that did kind of change how we were going to do this evening. So I'm not going to do the rose with y'all tonight. It's a little bit late. I think that would take us until 11 o'clock. I don't necessarily have the energy for that but I did still want to hang out with you guys I always enjoy it you guys seem to as well and I wanted to show you guys what I picked up at David's Art Supply which is a local art supply chain in the greater New Orleans area I found some cool stuff and I I mean we went yesterday so I was like might as well uh, wait until tomorrow to share it with you guys so the first of the cool things I found was this brush stand now Usually when I'm storing my brushes, I store them in a cup and they're all kind of standing up and that I've known for a while that has some problems, but I mean, unless you're working with Sumi brushes that have the loop, how, how do you hang them properly? How do you store them properly? Unless it's like in a drawer laying down, packed away. Well, Joseph tossed me into this and this is a stand that clamps onto your desk and it's got these like rubber cups that basically fit onto your brushes. So I've got a fairly large brush here. And I figure I will put this in the bathroom where I wash my cup, my uh, brushes anyway. And what's neat about this is they sell more of the cups and apparently they also sell more of the arms that you use to kind of hold your brushes. So this is very familiar. This is very similar to the Newar stand that um, I used for whew, years when I first started doing YouTube. But what I'm kind of hoping is that maybe we can put this in like a tripod stand and that will kind of open up some options for how to actually assemble this. So 
how's y'all's week been? It looks like it's supposed to have a silver part, but this one is not silver. It's black. That's fine. I assume the longer one twists into the base. So I was supposed to do my Instagram check-in for the Instagram challenge today. I got the kitten call. Why are you not going? Oh, do you go this way? Um, no, you don't go that way. Are there instructions? I'm so sorry, y'all. I don't know. I don't know how this works. I don't know that it, it, it explains it. I mean, I know how the concept works. Okay, so this is a middle piece. Okay. okay. Nice! Congratulations on finishing your comic timeline. If I start making real weird faces, it's because I'm trying to figure this out. I guess this is the top. It's only three pieces. How is this so, how am I so confused? Okay. I guess this goes in here. No, that's very loose. Are they going to make me call an adult? Stream and going this whole time YouTube didn't even change from the waiting screen until I refreshed the page. Oh, I'm sorry, Hema. It's my fault. I was the one who didn't hit go live. Hey, Joseph. Uh, can you come in here and help me figure this out? I don't know why I am having such a hard time with three pieces. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It hasn't been going on that long. Mostly I was just recapping in case people watching this after are like, what? Why were you late? Why aren't you doing roses? What's going on? You promised us roses. <sighs> How is this so hard? How am I struggling? I need an adult. <laughs> it's only three. Okay, well, I will I will set this aside for right now and we'll take a look at the caps. Nobody wants to watch somebody bumble with three pieces of metal for 15 minutes. It's like a Mr. Puzzle, but a joke. Okay, so these are just rubber. They're very rubbery. Hello. Hey. I'm sorry. And they and just kind of I know they're all threaded. And this is the bottom. Wait, how do you know? Yeah, good because luck. It's so long. Good luck screwing it in there because it doesn't seem to want to go, does it? And then it would hang on this like that. So, a simple concept, but it actually works, I think, really well. Should I time you? It's going to be like Mr. Puzzle. And then you don't have to take the caps off unless you, unless like with this, you wanted to use this end. Um, but you don't have to. And it's supposed to work with brushes of, brushes of all sizes. So here's a, a fairly small one. 
That's like right on the end of it might slip out on its own. Got it going. Oh, you fit. You got it. More like why YouTube does this to me, because you hit notify and YouTube was like, no, that's not important. Don't have to do that. And then to actually get it to hang. Now that's a problem because this thing kind of wibble wobbles. I was hoping it would just be in there. You might there. have to push it down really hard. Yeah, maybe. Hmm. So it's supposed to I'm not sit like this. This is the one that, oh, never mind, it keeps on going. And then you're supposed to be able sense. to add like eight to these. 12 minutes ago, didn't refresh, actually see anything going on till now. That's a YouTube, sometimes, I know it sounds like kind of conspiracy theorist, but sometimes I feel like YouTube is given up on me, so they're just waiting for me to get the clue and die. So in addition to that, I also got some more caps for it, because I have so many brushes. How tall do you want it? Because that's why it's divided into three rods. Yeah, you so can do all three, because I'm going to put it in the bathroom. I need it to be out of cat nibbling height. And these are also rubber. They're maybe not as nice as the original rubber. And they, yeah, look, it won't fit as snug either, which is kind of a bummer. This I mean, you could. It's not a $50 product. No, it's not a $50 product. But part of it is probably it's made by a small company and it yeah. just doesn't have the um, mass market. Yeah, I can't say if these are specialized parts. I assume this Niwar like stand isn't. No, but I think these weird little brush cups are, except Probably. these are nice. These That's are the ones that came with it, with. and then these are the cheaper ones. So you could clamp it if you wanted to on the desk. I'm going to clamp it in the bathroom because that's where I wash my watercolor brushes. So I will set this aside. I'm sorry it took us so long. I'm glad I had Joseph help me though because that, we could have been doing that forever. I also got some Shizen student grade watercolor paper. So this has way more of like that linen-y kind of texture to it. It's not necessarily as rough. What I was looking for was I was looking to see if they sold regular Shizen in this size because I could do like a bunch of little florals and then sell them. So it'll be neat to compare this student grade Shizen. It's still 100% cotton. I think they're just using a quicker, less expensive process to dry it probably. Speaking of Shizen, so while this says pastel paper, I figure I can probably use this for watercolor. And YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. As such, viewers will maintain, bleh, will experience buffering. I'm sorry about that, y'all. So anyway, basically with this, um, they had this in like this kind of buff paper and then they had an even darker tone paper. And I was thinking that unless this has some surface addition to it, it might work well for watercolor. So I'm gonna experiment with that in a minute or three. And then I have been talking about Gansai Tombi for a while. I have had a, um, a travel set by Kurataki very similar to this. And I really liked it. I brought it with me to Berlin. I brought it with me to Japan, I wanna say twice. You feel like I already have some of that paper? I do have some Shizen because I really like Shizen. I actually have a lot of Shizen because I really like Shizen. I don't have any this size. So what's neat about the uh, Gensai Tombi palette is you actually get some skin tones, some grays, and then some of the other uh, colors. So I want to swatch this for you guys as well. My original Kuratake travel palette which I still love and still use, is packed up somewhere. Otherwise, I'd like to do a head-to-head -head comparison of the two. They finally restocked their Stonehenge. So I picked up some of the mini pads because I really like doing ATCs on these and then hiding them for art drops. So um, I have videos where I've played around with this, but they also had some of the Stonehenge heavy paper, which is just like 300 pound Stonehenge, so thick like a board rather than thick like cardstock.
And since David's sells open stock PWC at a really good price, I picked up a few more tubes of PWC. And then finally, I picked up some more wax resist crayons. And what's weird about these is they're just clear wax. You can use Crayola if you want colored wax or white wax, but these are just clear wax. So if you put them on top of anything, they're not going to put a color down. It's just going to remain the color of whatever you put them on top of. What I don't understand is why these things have to be so expensive when you can get a pack of Crayola crayons for like 25 cents. But it's, it's not just David's getting these online is expensive. Getting them anywhere is expensive. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of explore some of this. I wanted to swatch these and these and also wanted to kind of play around with these papers. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go get a cup of clean water and I'm also going to go ahead and move the brush stand into the bathroom. What is this thing that I am putting together? It's supposed to be a brush stand that dries your brushes so that they're hanging down. So when you're drying your watercolor brushes or your inking brushes and you dry them, I'm grabbing one, you dry them standing up, there's a tendency that this all kind of gravity starts to pull it down over a while. And really we should be drying them like this, like Chinese artists and Japanese artists do when they are utilizing like sumi brushes that have those loops. But with Western style brushes, that's not really that easy. So this is supposed to be something that you can attach to a desk or you can attach to the canvas like they have here. And what it does is you attach these rubber caps to your brushes. You could, I mean, you could remove them or you could just leave them because they don't really add any weight. And there is this metal thing and you can buy more of these. So if you have a lot of brushes, you can dry all your, so like if you were in a class scenario, right? Where you, you teach a class, right? And they're, they're using your supplies. You could add on extra arms to this thing. So you should be able to hook it on and then hang your brush like this so that it dries going down so that the water doesn't go up into the ferrule and make the wood expand or the, and this is a plastic one, but make the wood expand and then start to crack. And I have brushes where the lacquer has started to crack from just that. So it's something that's supposed to not only kind of keep your brushes up, but also prolong the life of your brushes. And they also sell more of the little red caps, but the new ones are not made of the same, they're made of like a, a rubbery plastic, whereas I think these are actual latex rubber. And these are a little bit snugger fit than these. So these are supposed to fit any br brush because they expand. The newer ones, not so much. It's gonna fall, the smaller brushes like comic artists use might fall out. Whereas with the older ones that are tighter, it's less likely to fall out. So this was something Joseph kind of talked me into buying. It does seem like a good idea. It was kind of pricey but this isn't necessarily something that's like hugely mass market. I could just use a rubber band just so that it like, um, so put this on and then do rubber band right here. Maybe not, maybe that's a bad idea. Rubber band a little higher and then put it on top of it and that would create a gasket that it couldn't just, or I could just glue it onto it, yeah. So I thought that was kind of a neat idea. Um, even if it does legitimately expand, extend the lifespan of my brushes, then in a way it kind of starts paying. It, it was a $40 product and a good watercolor brush like a Kalinsky Sable, that's like $30 to $40 by itself. So if it does genuinely expand the lifespan of my brushes, then it pays for itself eventually. And you can get more of these arms I'm not gonna fully disable it, disassemble. I don't think I could get it back together. Joseph had to assemble it for me just now, but I am gonna put everything together. I'm gonna go get a cup of water and I'll be right back. I wish Bo would come sit in the chair to keep y'all company. Bo, 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 Bo. He says no, 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 no.
So for me, yes, catch chewing my watercolor brushes is what does in most of my brushes. He hasn't been doing that though, but he used to do that a lot. I would just like walk in to find him grazing on my watercolor brushes like they were a buffet. Uh, he hasn't really been doing that lately, but um, storing your Kalinsky sable brushes will also, storing them wrong will also cause that kind of a problem. Okay, so to start with, I want to go ahead and swatch my new PWC. Fortunately for me, that's all the way in the back of the book. That's right, this break is brought to you by 7-Inch Kara. So if you guys haven't read it online, I think most of y'all probably have, but if you haven't read it, you can read it online as a webcomic at 7inchkara.com, or you can buy volume one and volume two from the Netto shop, or you can get your own copy of Lilliputian Living. So I am starting with Lavender. It is a series B. And I used to really dislike pastel watercolors until I started trying like Holbein's pastel watercolors and uh, Casa Coupe's pastel watercolors and PWC pastel watercolors. Any good color swatching jokes? Uh -huh. I only know the worst of the, all the puns. The worst puns, the, the worst puns punstable. And then marine blue is this weird one that's kind of somewhere in between a green and a blue. And I wanted to swatch it, but it's still wet. I've used the ones for makeup brushes. Um, I used to use that all the time. It got packed up and I was like, oh, but the makeup brush ones are really kind of short. So if you're working with longer handle brushes, it can be kind of a challenge to draw. I mean, you, you can um, kind of scooch them up in there so that the, cause the way the makeup brush ones work is generally they are um, two pieces of acrylic with like silicone sandwiched in between. And the two pieces of acrylic have all these different shapes cut out of them for the for the brushes and the silicone has that like hex pattern to it where it can ex it's cut in in slits and it can expand mine was not too i got it real cheap on amazon it was not too stable i had to use rubber bands and clips to hold mine together so next is marine blue i also just have so many brushes. And that is a really nice color. That's more of a blue green than some of the other marine, or even like a turquoise than some of the marine blues I've tried. Unfortunately, that's still drying. So. I'm trying not to take up y'all's whole evening watching paint dry. Not gonna. There we go. Not my best handwriting, but that's all right. And I'll set that aside to dry. So every so often I'll like deep clean all my watercolor brushes, Ooh, big stretch. And um, then I have to like struggle to find places for them to dry. So I'm hoping that thing will help. Now I wish I knew where my original Zig slash Kuretake travel set was. 
I really like that thing, but I packed it up when we moved and <laughs> I have not gone looking for it. This is their Gensai Tombi set. So I'm assuming it's made with the same kind of materials as the travel set, probably very quick to activate, but a different range of colors. And I actually have a review Oh, and also these are not as full, I believe, as the travel set was. These seem pretty, pretty indented in. So their watercolor travel sets are, I really like them. I like the color selection. There's 12 colors in their travel sets. You do get a water brush. You also get a waterproof inking pen. Even if you don't like these, you can replace it with two water brushes, two, two pins, like whatever works for you really. Something else I really like about these is they're modular. You can pop the whole thing out and, oh, this is, this is nice. Okay, so it actually says what colors are in here. So before this thing gets wet, why don't we carefully, or, or not, okay. So the way to remove them is to slide them up or down because you can see there is a notch at the top. Hey, good evening. So I'm gonna remove all these, read the colors for you guys. Oh, okay, and then you gotta slip these all the way up. I was thinking it was one at the top and one at the bottom, but no. And I should probably take notes on this while we're doing it so that um, I can include this in the description later. Open up ye old notepad. And I misspoke, these are 14 colors, not 12 colors. So two more than one might expect. So in this set is number 40, lemon yellow. Number 32, red. Number 139, Cobalt Violet. I'm glad, yeah, I'm streaming a little bit later than I normally would. Number 46, Burnt Sienna. Number 60, Cobalt Blue. Number 11, Natural Beige. And this is actually one of the colors in the new palette too. And then a white, and I'm never really that excited about the inclusion of white in a watercolor set. So number 10, white. Number 43, Cadmium Yellow. Ooh, okay, number 34, Rose Matter. Number 51, Sap Green. Well, we ended up running a little bit late because my brother found the kitten and it was like, yay, kitten. Number 47, Raw Umber. Number 64, Ultramarine. It'll be really interesting when I find my original set, which I've used a lot, um, to compare the colors in them. Number 21, Gray. I know someone, Gray, he's asleep on the chair. Yes, he is. Or he or she, I don't, I don't know if Dax is a girl or a boy, I don't know. <laughs> The first, the first thing my brother said when he called me is he said he, so I just got stuck on that. Which is funny because when I adopted Bowie, I thought Bowie was a girl and Bowie is not a girl. Number 20, black. I mean, they're cats, so it doesn't really matter. But, and then if I want to put them back the way from whence they came, do all the bottom row first. So this is, this is neat. They use a proprietary half pan system. Since they are on rails, you can't just put whatever pans you like. 
So that's kind of a womp womp for me. I feel like probably in Japan, you can probably buy the empty pans and you can also probably buy the refills. So I am sure in the best case retail scenario, you can really customize a set like this, which is cool. And um, I was literally just complaining in my unboxing swatch for the new Kuretake colors that while I love Kuretake's Gensai Tombi, I don't use them that often because they are not very portable. And then the very next day I was at David's Art Supply and I saw this. So it would be neat to do a head to head comparison at some point. Yeah, Bowie's name for David Bowie. Um, we, we thought Bowie was, a, or I thought Bowie was a girl at first. And uh, we had a heck of a time finding a name because uh, Joseph and I had recently started dating. We would kind of uh, acquired Bowie from his parents. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to spritz some water on it instead. I think that name works well, regardless. Like we, I thought it would be a cute name for a female cat. It's a cute name for a male cat. It's just a cute name. It just works. Their gender is cat and they're yeah, that's about right, Hima. Hima said their gender is cat and their pronouns are feed and me. Yes. Pretty and or and or pet me. Attention to me. Love me. So what I am curious about these is I wonder if these are actually formulated like Gensai and they're using like animal hide. Ooh, that is a purple. That's cobalt violet. Um, and they're using like an animal hide glue or if they are Gensai inspired colors or colors typical to a Gensai palette because Gensai watercolors, generally I don't like to pre-activate them because they tend to get really soupy. They tend to absorb a lot of water. But I have always noticed that the Kuretake travel watercolors activate really quickly, which was something I really liked about them because in a, in a travel situation, you don't want to have to wait 10 minutes for your palette to finally absorb enough moisture. And I'm not going to swatch the white mainly because you guys would not really be able to see it. Flip it over, but so far the colors are all pretty vibrant. And a fly has decided that we're friends now. Isn't there a, I feel like there's a Blick in Houston. Cindy said, uh, I think it'll be worth the trip from Houston to New Orleans to visit David's. Their watercolor section seems beefier than Jerry's or Texas art supply stores. Um, I would agree with you that their watercolor section is beefier than, than the Jerry's in Nashville. Um, the Jerry's in Nashville didn't sell, what, Holbein, I think? And their, da uh, I'm sorry, their Daniel Smith selection was not as expansive as David's. I'm biased. I really like David's because they sell the kind of things I like to do. But if I was doing encaustics, I don't, I don't actually know if they sell a lot of encaustics and their acrylic section is not as big, I think as their watercolor section, but I think David's is well worth the visit anyway. Because canceled because of the kitten stream. Uh, no, just delayed. And I didn't know how long it would take um, to get Dax kind of cleaned up and situated. We got to get up tomorrow morning and uh, bring him to the vet, bring the kitty to the vet. You wouldn't think it from how my mom reacts, but she, we're all cat people. <laughs> Okay, so the colors in the Gensai Tombi set are very vibrant, very saturated. I think this, other than the gray, the white, and the black, which I know is kind of a big caveat, I 
think this could be a fun set to bring if you were doing um, like watercolor studies or florals. I think it's a good complement to their travel palette. I have been a fan of the kind of compact clamshell design for a while. It's small enough to fit into a purse or even a large pocket. So it's a very compact set and these colors reactivate very quickly. I don't know if they, their intention is more, um, this is a travel set for doing edigami on the go, or if this is intended to be more of a, um, like a travel set so that you can do plein air painting. It does say Japanese traditional paint for professional artists and crafters. It can be used as a gouache and watered down for use as a watercolor. Got to dig up my other set and compare them. Not for use by children. And it also says Gensai pen texture may look rough due to tiny air bubbles, which can occur during production, which does not affect their quality. Oh, I'm so jealous going to Darso. Um, soupy equals too much flow aid. Um, I think it kind of depends. So like I found that honey based watercolors can get soupy and that's because they're using honey and honey is hydrophilic. So it absorbs a lot of the water when you add it. So you don't necessarily have to preactivate honey based watercolors the way you might gum Arabic based watercolors because Gensai use a different binder. They use, this is Korean, but this is similar. They use an animal hide, like a gelatin based, uh, binder they absorb water a little bit differently. They activate a little bit differently than, you know, watercolors that use gum. This is very old, very gunky gum Arabic. I'm, I'm only, I mostly just use this for on air demonstration and it just keeps getting nastier and nastier looking. So I don't, I don't ever, I don't ever add flow aid. Um, some companies are very quiet about their proprietary formula. So I'm not going to go out on a limb and be like, oh no, they don't use flow aid. Cause I mean, maybe they do. Recently learned that Gensai Tombi's cobalt blue isn't real cobalt. It doesn't granulate. That doesn't surprise me because I think Kuratake Gensai Tombi, they're all in Japan. All the pans are priced about the same price. So that doesn't really allow for more expensive pigments. You know what I mean? Because usually when we have different series and series prices, it's because the pigments they're using are rarer and more expensive to extract. So it makes sense to me that it wouldn't be real to uh, cobalt. Okay, so I want to explore the Shizen. So I have some of my Shizen. Joseph pointed out that I have a lot of Shizen. I really like Shizen. You can buy Shizen in, I think these originally were 50 sheet packs. I'm probably down to 25 in each because I use this a lot. So this is their professional grade hot press and underneath it is their cold press. This is Shizen student grade watercolor paper. It is a cold press, but it has kind of a linen-y texture on top of it. Like they squeezed all that extra water out. And then I also bought some Shizen toned, they had a, a darker buff color as well, toned um, pastel paper. Because my rationale is, it is cotton rag. It's slightly lighter. It's 200 GSM rather than 300 GSM. But I think it might work as a watercolor paper. So I want to find out and I want to kind of test it out. Yeah, I, I think, I think Dawn's onto it. it. It's probably full of fillers. Ah, Mission Gold add flow aid to their paint. Okay. That would explain why they turn kind of soupy. Hmm. Hot ginger tea, so good. So I'm gonna go switch out my water and I wanna grab some watercolors that I might get my um, Como Rebbe watercolors out, mainly cause I use Como Rebbe a lot, especially on Shizen. So this is the Shizen Hot Press watercolor sketchbook. I really like it. 
Um, I was looking for a sketchbook that had cotton rag paper but wasn't so expensive that I'd be intimidated to use it. I also like that it's spiral bound. I was talking to Joseph about this the other day. I don't like the expensive hardbound sketchbooks and the real rationale, there's a few reasons why. They don't lay flat, like this one will lay flat, but the real, real, real rationale is if I mess up in one of those hardbound ones, I have to cut the page out and then you can tell I cut the page out. Whereas with these spiral bound ones, I can remove a page and nobody will know that I removed a page. I don't do, hey Tyra, long time no see. I don't um, normally remove pages, but you know, sometimes you do something and you're just so not happy with it for whatever reason that it kind of sticks in your head and you're like, you can't get over it, you know? And, and you're so afraid that you're just gonna keep making bad art like that. So my solution is just take it out of the sketchbook and that way it's not in there to make you sad. So I use Mozart a lot on She's Zen. So that's what I'm gonna use today when playing around with these. So I'm gonna switch out my water and be right back. Speaking of silk paintings, I've seen this illustrator on Instagram do silk paintings and they look so good. It seems like such a cool medium. I would love to try it, but I don't want to, silk is kind of expensive. So I don't want to like go out and buy it, not having ever taken a class and then learning as I go. Uh, so I would love to learn how to do it, but I'm afraid to try it by myself. Make my own sketchbook, both sewing, binding, and wire coil binding. It is fun and relaxing. Yeah, um, they. I know they sell the wire spiral binding machines online. And a, a someday dream for me is to um, make some very custom bespoke art supplies to sell. So um, like a small amount of watercolors and a small amount of like really nice watercolor sketchbooks. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna show you guys regular Shizen hot press and cold press so that we have kind of a, a baseline. I'm not gonna grab the top sheet since I kinda use that to protect it. I long since last lost the packaging. Okay. I don't have to have them individually labeled because believe me, I can tell the difference between the two. I wish there was Tacho Vision like smell vision because it, it's very apparent when you touch it. So She's in Hot Press has more of a texture than some cold presses do, um, but it is fairly, the way they manufacture it is they roll it through hot rollers. That's how you get the hot press, whereas cold presses roll through cold rollers. And their cold press has way more pronounced texture. So this is their student grade cold press. Oh, thank you, Indy. Indy Kitty says, Sea Lemon has a lot of videos on book binding. Yeah, that's right. And, oh gee, I really like Sea Lemon's work. So if you're interested in making your own sketchbooks or make, binding your own books, it could also be zines. Yeah, Sea Lemon's channel is really great. And they're another one who um, I think her channel is relatively popular, but not as popular as it honestly deserves to be because her content is so great and so helpful. Um, but they're another one who they are able to do what they do because of their Patreon. CM said, sort of like Batik with wax resist, but a little more fine art and execution, compose, vivid colors, etc. 
I can, yeah, I can see that. Uh, floral is a subject that is very deceiving. It looks easy, but it's difficult when you try to paint it. That's how I feel about landscapes myself, so I get you. I'd love you to see you do a chill stream on it. Man, if I could, I, I would love to do like a more serious one on it because I am very interested in that kind of watercolor. Uh, my concern is I'd like to take a class on it, you know what I mean, and, and get some direct feedback. Is silk painting the same thing as batik painting? No, silk painting is, let me find an example and link it for you. It's, it's like a, you'll know it when you see it. Give me a sec. That's not, the one I'm looking at right now is more like batik, uh, but the one I'm thinking about who does it on Instagram, sorry, my brain <laughs> shut down on me. Um, maybe, mm, what I'm looking at now, it's not the way that other artists does it, but it is still really good. Okay, this is more like what I'm talking about. Sorry about that. Floral or my villainy origin story. <laughs> okay, so this is their student grade paper while it does have kind of a pronounced cold press texture. So this is their professional, this is their student grade. We're not looking at the deckled edges because you can get the Shizen professional with deckled edges. That's not really what I'm considering. But with this one, mostly what you see is the texture from the felts that they laid on top of it. And with this one, there's a much more, and it's also this one is more, more kipped and buckled, um, a little more irregular. But with this one, you can really see that they might have, like you can either see the mesh from the screen, so maybe they're not using as fine a screen, or they may have even pressed it to remove a lot of the water first and then continue to process it. Hopefully y'all could see that. I know my webcam is not the best way to showcase that. Yeah, I actually, oh, we're of, we're of the same mind, Cindy. So I actually bought, I'm not doing it tonight. I'm, I'm putting all the materials together for a separate video. Um, I bought a We Are Memory Keepers punch system that does disc bound punches because I want to make a multi-paper uh, watercolor sketchbook that has very easy to remove pages that kind of goes with my existing. Okay, and then this is the pastel paper. Oh, I'd really rather, I don't want to like use a whole sheet for my test, but if I cut it, it's gonna look like obviously cut. So I'll just roll with it. Okay, so one side of this is more like a hot press. And then this side, it, well, I don't know. We got some of it where it's very smooth and then some of it where it's really rough. I'm hoping it'll still be receptive enough to watercolors that I would want to paint on it. All right, so. I guess what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do swatches on all of them and see how see how it goes and then maybe do or maybe do mud on all of them and see how that goes play basically play around with the paints on all of them tear the paper all right you know what if i'm gonna if i'm if i'm sacrificing this sheet anyway oh i wish i still had a deco uh ruler oh mm -hmm looking for a, a big metal ruler because you can lay one and then yank it and you'll get a really nice deckle. That's what I used to do when I was a printmaker. 
but the only metal rulers I seem to have are either ginormous or they're so far away. Let's see if I can do it with this. I mean, you're right, because I'm I would be sacrificing this hole anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Ah, okay. If I'd been using a heavier ruler, that wouldn't have happened. So that's that's on me. But you guys can see you get go away, fly. It's swarming season right now, so that's such a good idea, though. Thank you. There, close enough, good enough. I can do something with this. Save that for another day. But if you use a heavier ruler or a deckling ruler, you'll be able to get a nice deckled edge like that. Ooh, that does sound like magic. That kind of reminds me of when we were doing the fabric painting. I really enjoyed that. So I think silk painting would be very relaxing because it's really all about wet into wet techniques and just kind of rolling with whatever the paper does. So hot press, cold press, student grade, pastel. And these are all she's in papers. So I'm going to try to work quick because I definitely want to do wet into wet blending. Now one of the things I like about Shizen in general is that it will stay open and wet for a while. So I don't know why I'm rinsing my brush in between, but it'll stay open and wet for a while. So you're able to kind of do more wet into wet blending. So I'm hoping these papers will maintain those qualities as well. Ugh. Oh, 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 no, no, oh, no, it's already resisting it, no, well, maybe I can make it work, I mean, there's really only one way to find some of this out, and it's by tr trying it out, I wish she's ended a sampler pack, because that would be a very affordable way to find that out. And unfortunately, my head is in the way for the student grade, so I'll move back a little bit. So far, though, the student grade's not bad. I don't, I'm not, like, in love with it. I'm not like, oh, it's so much better, but it's also not terrible. And I think I could force the pastel paper into submission and make it, Make it bend to my will. She's in it. Yeah, she's in is weird about their sizing. I have gotten some sheets that were just not good. Um, what I like when you buy she's in in bulk is if that happens, so long as you didn't do a sketch that you really love, you can either force it to do what you want it to do or you can just toss it and say okay this one won't work for me like it's not it by no means is it my like mainstay watercolor paper I like using it for florals but part of that is also it's cheap it's a good cheap cotton rag or good enough cheap cotton rag watercolor paper Could I fill a page with those two colors? They're very pretty. They are really pretty. They go together well. And I'm not doing a true mud test where I would try to, I would do three layers over three days and look to see if the, the pigments relift, if they behave strangely, if they turn to mud, basically. 
I'm just doing kind of one layer just to kind of test the properties and see if there's anything that like really stands out to me as like, oh, this is terrible. I mean, the student grade is, it's okay. I, th I think I am going to use it. I'm not like, oh, it's, it's the best I've ever tried. But I'm also not like, oh, I hate this. Why? And the pastel paper, so over here, it was a little resisty. Over here, it's all right. It's not a watercolor paper, but I was thinking that since it is cotton rag and she's in and made with similar processes, it might, you know, be a passable toned watercolor paper. I think I missed something. Sorry. It seems like you were having a bad day, Indie Kitty. I'm sorry to hear that. I didn't catch it in the chat, but um, sometimes it, as as I'm painting and talking, and you know, I miss stuff, so I'm sorry. But I'm sorry you're having a bad day too. Hopefully, this weekend has some happy surprises in store for you. Yes, I see. So um, I am getting to the pastel last and it doesn't necessarily blend as well. So the pastel paper is probably not your friend for really wet into wet washes. I think you could force it to do it a little bit, but it's not happy about it. Now, something I'm kind of impressed by is the cold press student grade isn't buckling up the way the hot press currently is. And I wanted to do these like kind of impromptu little mini, oh, I grabbed the wrong color. Whoop little mini um, watercolor florals on the student paper. And I think this will work for that because I mean, I, I have been doing florals on the Mitrina watercolor paper, which is like a mix of cotton rag and cellulose and it's a funky paper. So if I can make that work, I think I can make this work. It also be interesting to see if the colors dry less vibrant I've been going with some really loud colors. Oh. I just grabbed the wrong color again. I'm so sorry. You can tell I'm getting tired. It was a long day even before I got the kitten call. Although that put me in a really good mood. Yeah, the pastel is not necessarily as receptive to watercolor, but it'll be interesting to, oh, what do I wanna do? I wanna do some blue. It'll be interesting to try it. I'm going to sneak it on here, kind of at the bottom. Now I So once upon a time, I put some masking fluid on Shizen cold press. And when I went to remove it, it totally wrecked the surface of the paper and made it handle like toilet paper. And the student grade, I know I'm in the way, I'm so sorry. The student grade is starting to get that kind of toilet papery look. So it probably can't take too much water at any given time.
Tired plus kitten brain is quite the combo. Uh, I don't think Bahang watercolor paper is cheap. They're more like mid-range. The cheap cotton rag paper I like is Bao Hong. What I think is kind of interesting is that depending on where you live, it can really shift what you consider like high quality and what you consider low quality. So um, I, I've never lived full time in another country. I've visited other countries, but I've never lived anywhere but the US. And watercolors in the US are already kind of expensive compared to like Germany and Japan. Um, so what is so, what is kind of sold as professional grade in the US is sometimes student grade everywhere else. Or like, I know a lot of people who, when they're in the art store, they'll go with uh, cellulose paper because it's, it's more affordable, but I really feel, I like cellulose paper okay, but I feel like it should be marketed not as a student grade paper, but just as cellulose based watercolor paper because they handle differently. I'm just filling up the bottom here with, with colors kind of seeing how it handles. And this one has kind of that laid linen texture that the student grade has. And as I'm getting to the bottom of the page and the texture is becoming more pronounced, which is interesting because there's areas on the pastel where it's just like smooth. And then there's areas where you get that pronounced linen texture. So while these are wet, I ought to try doing a little bit at least of wet into wet and see how that, oh, that already dried. Sorry, Butterfingers. Tried to catch it and I definitely did not. I'm trying to blend it out a little bit, but my water is dirty. And it's lifting a little bit, which I don't love. Oh, this one's dry too. You know, it's Louisiana and there are some nights where it takes one million years for anything to dry. And then there are some nights where it dries so quick. We do have the dehumidifier going, but. But what I'm really curious about is this student grade paper here. How does this take? Because I think it's still wet. Yeah, it is. Wow. So maybe it doesn't have as much sizing. But it does have that like scr scrubby, toilet papery kind of like the surface has been disturbed thing going on. And you guys saw me. I haven't done anything overly rude to this paper. It's just And then this dried not quite as saturated. Let's add some water and try to blend it out. This is interesting though. I'm gonna have to do a field test with it, like um, do an illustration on it and that will give me a better idea of how well it handles because I don't, I don't know how I feel just putting paint on it. Doesn't tell me what all that I need to know.
but it doesn't it doesn't seem any worse to me than their student paper but their student paper is just not really their their cold press oh well to me it would almost be like worth filing them away into different things i kind of feel like student grade paper you have to have more experience to get what you want out of it than professional paper because it is more finicky uh. Actually, I forgot her name. I'm so sorry. It's like Ruby, R-U-B-I. She's an artist on YouTube. She set about making handmade watercolor paper, cotton rag paper, and she was going to add t-shirts in, and that didn't end up happening. But what I think you can do is you can buy what's called cotton linters, and you can add that to your pulp mixture or use that to make it. So t-shirts would require a lot of breaking down, a lot of processing to get those fibers kind of broken down enough to uh, actually make paper from it. I do want to try making cotton rag watercolor paper. Uh, I'm kind of waiting until Kabocha can come visit me and we can get into lots of trouble together. Uh, I think Shizen and Kadi papers are both made from cotton left over from the garment industry, says CM. It, I would be interested in seeing, that's cool, and I would be interested in seeing in what form those those leftovers are. Like, are they um, like cotton rags? Are they a woven cotton material? Like, t-shirts are more woven, they're a knit, um, whereas like a, a, a lightweight cotton shirt, I don't, I'm not wearing one so I can't use that as an example, but like a dress shirt, for example, is woven but it's not knitted so it's not as tightly compressed you wouldn't have to break it down as much as t-shirts uh, Calvin said cellulose paper is often sold as student grade paper but students probably shouldn't use them y yeah so I, I wish they'd market it differently because it has its place and it is cheaper but it doesn't perform the way a cotton rag would so like I remember when I was first learning watercolor and I was watching a lot of tutorials and they would they didn't say what kind of paper they were working on necessarily necessarily they just called it watercolor paper and they would show all these different techniques that you could do with wet and wet and i would try to replicate that on like canson xl and i it just wouldn't work and i'd be like why and it's because it is a very different paper um cotton rag stays open longer it sucks the paint and the water and the pigments into the fibers so it kind of holds on to it for you Whereas cellulose, everything just sits on the surface. And that can mean faster dry times. And if you work really light, it can be great. But if you do a lot of layers, if you want to do a lot of atmospheric wet into wet blending, cotton rag is going to be more forgiving for that. Uh, Indy said, my fave pencils are three bucks a pop. I found a 72 set of Derwent Intense pencils in the wood box for like $147. That's a good deal. That's about $2 each plus the wood box. Yes, cellul Calvin said that cellulose paper requires good water control to use them properly. Yes, y yes, you can't just dump. I mean, I, you can dump a lot of water on a cotton rag paper. And depending on the paper, some do better than others. But it'll, it'll mostly just accept what you've given it. Whereas cellulose paper, it, it can cause a lot of problems. And Tyra said, my favorite cheap watercolors in the U.S. are Arteza cold press watercolor paper. B Paper Company Cold Press Watercolor Paper and Canson XL Watercolor Paper. Oh, y'all are y'all are having a good chat tonight. I wish I was awake as y'all. <laughs> uh, it's like trying to do Bob Ross without the flowy kind of acrylics. Cotton grows in Louisiana. Maybe when we get on a place back, we'll grow some and make paper from scratch. You know, I was kind of thinking about growing dye, producing plants, and 
that's like that's like a good five years down the line though that's what sucks about being stuck in the middle of house house hunting property buying etc cetera, etc cetera, is i have all these ideas for it for what i want to do when we have some property and some land because i want to get back into screen printing and little block printing and it just has to wait until i can do that so i i I don't have any anything definitive about these papers other than I want to I'm going to field test the two new ones they're good enough that I think I could paint on them so that's better than like them being terrible art supply homesteading yeah yeah I think it's yeah I think it'd be pretty cool to have like a dye garden and be able to be like yeah from marigolds you get this really beautiful bubble book color and here's some indigo we use that to produce indigo the color etc etc a whole new movement that is so much energy i cannot i would not necessarily that's that's more like a um like doing it for fun like i don't think i'm going to produce enough of anything to be able to be like i'm using all my own homegrown dye-based watercolors i mean i'll probably like be able to do like a painting like that yeah just yeah the, yeah so uh they, they get me on doomsday preppers <laughs> yes that would be my doomsday prepper episode where i have this hyper specific scenario where all the art supply stores in the u.s were shut down and all chains of distribution were destroyed now becca hilburn is growing her own art supplies on her land <laughs> that would be pretty funny that would be a good intro for that the pastel paper makes me think you can do galaxy stuff on it Probably, um, it did, sorry, gosh, the stupid fly. The darkest it got was like a dark buff. So what I was thinking with this, cause I love tone tan for portraits. I was thinking this could be, this in the buff color could be really good for more portrait work because then you're not spending all that time building up those colors. You're, ma you're basically using that as the mid-tone, adding in some shadows and then adding in some highlights. Being a watercolorist is suffering only if you insist on growing your own art supplies. The doomsday art cult. Are we drinking Kool-Aid or are we drinking paint water? Well, anyway, um, so we kind of played around with everything, which is good. Um, I don't have anything definitive to say about the student grade or the pastel other than I think I could paint on it, so I probably will give it a shot. Um, I wish they sold sampler packs where you can get a bunch of different Shizen papers because that would be, I like Shizen, so I wanna play around with more of their papers, but that would be much more economical for me or for anyone figuring out if they like it than buying a 25 pack and then it's like, do I like it? Do I not like it? I don't know. How to make paint like the old master. I'm going to, am I going to paint Duffy on, so Duffy is a little cute black poodle. Um, what I wanted for Duffy was I wanted to use like a paper that really invites a lot of granulation. So I was thinking I would use the Paul Rubens cotton rag paper because it likes granulation a lot. And I was thinking I would use, um, like some of the super granulating colors like moon glow and lunar black to help build up those tones you know so that we have like this diffused color kind of and then I go in and I add like these sharp black highlights oh that would be really nice yeah let me see first thing to do okay read that sorry the lower left one looks like it'd be a pretty stock texture yeah I'm gonna let these dry and then I'll probably scan them and pop them up on uh my patreon sorry brain is tired but um the paper on the back is damp not that there's anything wrong with that i'm just noting that and let me see with these not as damp and i i want to say i kind of slathered a little damp i kind of slathered the water on equally so i'm wondering if the student grade is just more absorb absorptive now something that's going to be interesting after these have had a chance to fully dry is to see how much the colors desaturate from paper to paper. And Joseph said, if you learned something today, give Becca a tip through Super Chat. 
or at coffee. Or join my Patreon, yes. Anyway, um, I, I can tell I'm kind of fading. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I had so much fun. Y'all are always such a delight to hang out with. That's why even though we did the kitten stream, I was like, at the very least, we're going to look at some art supplies today because I like hanging out with you guys and I like being able to keep up with the chat. And uh, when we're streaming using my phone, that's just harder for me to do. Uh, but I will make sure the kitten stream slash video is live and I'll give you guys frequent check-ins because my number one pet peeve on Twitter when people are shaking the can and they're like my, my pet needs to go to the vet is I dang it if I give you money I want to see pet pictures I want follow-ups I want to know how that baby's doing and a lot of people will just be like give me money for my cat and then you never hear from them until they need money for their cat again so even though I'm not asking for any money for the cat I'm still going to share pictures with you guys because it's a kitten and it's adorable and um, who doesn't like kitten pictures? So those will be shared in the community tab and on Instagram and on the Discord server. And uh, the middle one might place well with super granulating paint. I like how you think. This is their cold press. The cold press really likes granulation a lot. Their hot press does too, but the cold press really likes it. It's got a really pronounced texture. Now the thing about Shizen, particularly for their, the two, nicer watercolor papers is you do if you want to add a lot of color to it you do there it does hit a saturation point where you have to let it dry be, all the way before you want to paint on it again otherwise the surface texture gets wrecked and you, it's it's very difficult to paint on so it's a good one for like you put down your base layers your your background layers whatever and then you go eat dinner and then you come back that kind of paper so it's one that really likes patience Yes, I will give you guys pet the Dax Codex. I will give you guys pet uh, cat report. Yes. Um, yeah, and and feeding the stray cats is nice. Um, all go away. I have a stray fly. All the stray cats around here seem to be our neighbors' pets. So I try to get them to let me pet them, and they're just like, no, I'm good. But um, yeah, I will check in with you guys with updates on how Dax is doing. He doesn't live here. He lives at my mom's house, but we see her a lot. And I'm sure we will be seeing Dax a lot. So cross your fingers that the vet goes well and that kitten is in, you know, as good a health as can be expected from a cat who was a stray and was probably separated from its mom a little young. But kitten seems very spunky and full of energy and friendly and curious. So I'm, I'm hoping it just needs to be adopted by us basically and fed and loved on and get it shots and get vet care and it should be okay. So, all right guys, have a wonderful evening. It was so good seeing you guys. Hopefully next Friday we can do some watercolor painting together. Hopefully we don't find another kitten, but um, I hope you guys have a great week. And um, so I will have the vote up for Monday's chill stream tomorrow. So keep an eye out for that, and I hope I'll see you guys on Monday. Bye, guys. Have a good weekend. Stay safe.